So next, let's see how we use them. For this, we'll need to go into Eevee mode. And we'll see we already have some textures applied here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this ground plane. I'm going to go to small. I'm going to make it maybe 10%. And I'm going to add this particular insert to the ground plane. I click the Add Insert button. I drag it along. And there's there it is. So you can see how that worked out. Now I want to apply it to this object. And that's simple. I select this object first, this object second. I go over here. And I am going to say copy material to select it. And it did just that. Stop, 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 stop right there. So this is why we use beta testers. When I showed the beta testers this video, they all agreed that it's way too hard to have to actually insert an object and then copy materials over just to change the material. They said that they would never do it. The workflow was just too difficult. Furthermore, they said they want to be able to filter the K-Packs based on materials. So I got with Master Xeon and Proxy and we talked it over and decided that, yeah, we need to do that. We changed the new version of KitOps, the one that you'll get with this product, both the free and the pro, has two new features. One is up here, you have this filters area. So if we look here right now, here are all our K-Packs. By the way, we're showing a bunch of new K-Packs that you haven't seen in this video previously because this is the version that will ship. And if you notice, all the material ones have a CW in front of them. So if we go in here and we just type in CW, and tab out of that, now we're going to see that we have only the CW or the materials K-Packs available. The other thing that's really cool is that now we don't need to add an insert. All we need to do is we hover over this and it says control is to import and assign a material. So if we find a material we like, we select the object and we hit the control key and add the insert and we're going to add that material directly to the object. Here we added a nice carpet material. Now, if we want to, as we'll go over in another video on how we change and update all of these materials, but let's just take a look at this one and let's, let's turn off this texture and let's just add a, a, a color to it, some kind of color. And this is a new color. Now, if I go over here and I say, I want to insert this, I'm going to hit the control key and hit this, and it's going to add the same texture. And the reason we do this is because we don't want to add a lot more different image files directly to the scene. It just bloats the scene and makes Eevee have to work harder. Well, you say, okay, that's great. But what if I actually want this same carpet material? So that's easy. So uh, if we want to actually create a new instance with this material, we look over here and we have the control shift. So if we hold the control shift key down and hit insert, we are going to get a new material. And that's how easily that works. So when we added the control shift, we actually created a new material and applied it directly to this object. While that may be something we want to do sometimes, it's probably a better idea to use a version of this object to create the material for this object. And the reason why is if we go in and we look at our image editor, we're going to see there are two seamless carpets here. This means that we're using twice the amount of memory for the exact same image. So first off, how do we get rid of one and which one do we get rid of? Let's go back into our shader editor and let's go back into where we load our images. And I'm going to zoom in here and I'll see that this is seamless carpet texture JPEG. Tab back out of that. That's the one we want to delete. So I'm going to go back into our UV editor and I'll choose, or I'm sorry, that's the one we want to keep. So we'll choose the other one, hold the shift key down and delete it. Now, it doesn't update right now, and the reason for that is that we're going to need to save and revert the file in order for it to do that. So I'm going to go back in here, and while I'm in the shader editor, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to hold the shift key down here and delete this as well. And then I'll save, and then I'll revert, and we'll see that now, if we look at our textures, we only have one carpet texture. And if we look at our images, we only have one seamless carpet texture also. So that's a really important concept to understand. So this is very simple. Now we click this, click this. I've mapped this copy material to selected to a key. And now how do I make a unique version or what we call an instance of that in the shader editor? Well, that's easy. We just basically click on the number two here or the number two here, and it's going to create a new version like it did. And then I can just make changes to that version and it'll be different from this version. So. That's an important concept.
resist using the control shift assign material without linking unless you make major changes in here like for instance changing an image map then that is when we will use this control shift feature for the add insert <laughs> 